Hi there, this is Caitlin Porter from the Mongoose Enablement Team. Welcome to part four of the Mongoose Hello World training series. In today's video, we are going to extend our application further by building onto our existing items table. We will get started on working with themes and theme classes, and we'll create our orders facility that will allow users to place orders in our store portal. In this first part, we want to allow the users to add an image of their item on the items form. To do so, we will first have to manually add a column to our items table, then we will need to add it as a property onto our IDO, and finish up by adding it to our items form. We will also utilize the event system so users can import an image from a button. Up to this point, we have used the new data maintenance wizard to create our tables, forms, and IDOs. But in real development, you will often work from existing objects. Mongoose has several core forms that allow you to manually add columns and properties to existing objects. Let's start by opening the SQL tables core form. And select OK when you receive this prompt. Let's filter to our items table. Type in items in the table name and hit F4. Once you filter to your table, Hit the Columns button to view the columns on the table. Hit the New icon from the toolbar to add a new column. Let's name this field Picture. Give it a data type of var binary, and check the is nullable checkbox. Let's give this a length of negative one, which in Mongoose means unlimited. Go ahead and save your record and close the forms. Next, we want to create a picture property class that can be used throughout our application. Let's do so by opening the IDO property classes form. Exit filter in place mode, and let's add the following property class. Name the class picture, give it a data type of binary, a length of negative one, a column data type of var binary, and under the binary format field, select PNG. Save and close the form, and let's unload the global form objects by going to form, definition, unload global form objects. Next, we want to add this as a property to our IDO. Go to form, open, and search for IDOs to open our IDO collections form. Type in items for the IDO name and hit F4 to filter. Hit the new property button at the top to add a new property. There are several different types of properties that you can use. In this case, we're going to use the default, which is bound, and hit next. In the bind to list, select our picture column. The property name will default to picture, and let's select our picture property class that we just created. You can see that the data type and column data type are now being inherited from the property class. Hit finish to create our property. Let's close the form and unload the global form objects from form definition. Now let's add a button to our items form that will allow the user to import an image. Click the design mode toolbar icon to open the designer. Select Site Default for our editing scope. Let's open our Items form. Let's remove our Edit component since we no longer need it. Click on the component and hit the Delete key. Next, I'm going to reposition my button to the right of the screen. Click on the component and drag it to the right. Let's give our button a caption. Select the component and type in S Import in the Caption field on the Properties panel. Hit the ellipsis to create the string value. Let's grab a static component that will display our picture. In the toolbox on the left, select the static component and draw it on the form to the right of your fields. Let's bind this to our picture property. Expand the data source section and select property for the binding type and select our picture property for the binding field. By default, all static components include a colon at the end. To remove this colon, scroll down to the miscellaneous section under Specific Attributes, set no colon to true. Scroll to the top of the Properties panel and let's rename our component to Static Picture. We consider it a best practice to always name your components and prefix them with component type. Save the form and let's create an event that will import an image into the picture property. Expand the Details pane at the bottom and select the Event Handlers tab. Hit the new icon at the bottom to create a new event. Let's name this event Import Picture. Hit OK and scroll down to Response Type and let's select Binary Value Action. Click the ellipsis on the Parameters field and let's set the action type to Import. Now, select the static picture for our component that's bound to the Binary Value property. Hit OK 
And let's change the primary event on our button to use our custom event. Select our button component and expand the events section on the properties panel. Set the primary event to import picture. Save the form and now we're ready to test this out in runtime mode. Switch back to the runtime mode tab and reopen your form. Now we are ready to import an image onto our item. Select the import button. You should see a dialog asking you to select the file. Select the bike image that's located in the Hello World Assets folder that you downloaded from the portal. You can tell this row is modified by this orange diamond on the left. At this point, pressing save will save the binary value back into the database. Continue on adding images for the other three remaining items. All of these images are located in the Hello World Assets folder. When you're done importing the images, remember to save. In this next part, let's create a theme and theme classes that can style our button and use them throughout our application. Switch back to the Design Mode tab and let's edit the themes by going to Edit, Themes. Hit the New button at the bottom to create a new theme. Let's name it Hello World. Then select the Edit button on the top right to edit that theme. Select Button on the left under Form Component. Then on the bottom where it says Class Name, type in Blue Button and hit Add. This will add a theme class to the button. After you hit Add, the tree will refresh. Re-select your button and then select your Blue Button class. Select Normal State under Categories. Let's give our button a background color of Pound FF5CC6C7. And then our foreground color, use the ellipsis. This will open the color picker. Let's select Solid and let's leave the default as white. Hit OK. This will set the text color to white and the background color blue. Hit OK and save your changes. We now need to apply our theme to the application. Close the designer and go back to runtime mode. Go to View, User Preferences, and go to the Layout tab on the left. Select our Hello World theme. Hit OK. Now let's reopen the designer. Hit the designer icon from the toolbar. Then select our button component and expand the appearance section under the properties panel. Select our blue button theme class. Then you should be able to see your button being styled with the theme class that we created. We will use this theme class going forward when we build our store portal. For now, save your changes. Okay, let's move on to another IDEO capability. Mongoose allows us to join and utilize data from multiple tables. Our items facility has a reference to units of measure, but in cases like this, you'll often want to display other fields from that reference. In this particular case, in addition to the two character unit of measure code, we'd also like to show the unit of measure description on our items form. To do this, we want to create a join from our items table to our unit of measure table. Switch back to the runtime mode tab and let's open our IDEO collections form. Type in items for our IDEO name and hit F4 to filter. Then select the tables button at the bottom. And then select the new table button at the top to add a new table reference. For our table name, select our UMS table. Give it a table alias of UMS. And below we can select the columns for the join. Select UM equals items UM. And then hit the add button to add it below. Click OK to create the join and then close the IDEO tables form. Now we want to create a new property on our items IDEO that will publish access to the description column join from the UM's table. Click the new property button. Leave the default of bound selected and hit next. Drop the list of columns we can bind to and now notice that we not only see columns on the primary base table which is the items table, but now we also see the columns from the UM's table. Select the UM's description column and let's prefix our property name with UMS. We consider a best practice to use the table alias as a prefix for properties that are bound to join tables. Click Finish. Let's now close the forms and unload all the global form objects. Now let's add our new property to our items form. Switch back to the design mode tab and close your items form and then unload all the global form objects. Reopen the form. Grab a static component from the toolbox and draw it on your form just under the unit and measure field. Rename the component to Static Description. Give it a caption of S Description. Then grab an edit component from our toolbox and draw it to the right of our static. Rename the component to Edit Description and then expand the data source section. Set the binding type to Property and let's bind it to our new UM's description field. 
We also want to add our property to the grid. Select the grid component and hit the Edit Grid Columns button in the top left. Select the last column and then hit the Add button to add it at the end. Rename this grid column UM Description Grid Call. Expand the Data Source section and set the binding type to Property and let's select our UM's description for the binding. Hit OK and save your form. Switch back to the Runtime Mode tab and reopen your items form. Now, if we switch through records, you'll notice that the description updates with each item. If you change the unit measure, the description isn't updated until you save it. We could use Mongoose validators and component classes to change this functionality, but for now, we're just going to move on. Let's look at what just happened with our new table join. Mongoose sent a load collection request in the form of an XML to the IDEO runtime service. The IDEO runtime service processed that XML and converted it to a SQL statement that included a table join. The results were then sent back to Mongoose, which returned the description for the unit of measure field. To provide drill down from the items to unit of measure table, we'll use a property class extension. Remember that property class extensions are another level of the inheritance model. Suppose I want my user to be able to right click on the unit of measure field and be able to drill into it. To do so, we'll use our property class extension to set the right click menu. Switch back to the Design Mode tab and select our Unit of Measure combo box. Scroll down to Inheritance in the Properties panel and expand it. Click on the ellipsis for the Edit Property Class Extensions field. It will prompt you asking if you want to create the Property Class Extension. Say Yes. Expand the Behavior section and under the Add Details and Find Form section, we can specify the form for the user to drill into. Select our UM's form for both the Add Details form as well as the Find form. Then select or type in UM as our property. Then scroll down to the right click menu field and select the standard details add find menu. Click OK and save your form. Then reopen the form in runtime mode. Now when we right click on our unit of measure field, we should see our custom right click menu. However, we don't. Why is this? Because our right click menu is here on the property class extension level, it's possible that it's being overwritten either on the component class level or on the component level. Since we haven't created a component class, it's a safe bet that it's being overridden here on the component level. So let's check that out. Go back to the Design Mode tab and reselect our UM Combo Box component. Expand the Behavior section, and as you can see, there's a standard default right click menu defined on the component level. Let's clear this right click menu and save it. Let's reopen our form to test it. Now that there isn't anything assigned on the component level, our property class extension should dictate our right click menu. Right click on the UM combo box and now we see our right click menu that we assigned on the property class extension. Mongoose now has the metadata for providing things like drill down when the user selects details for example. This functionality will automatically be applied to any components that are bound to the UM property class. Close the items form and let's switch gears. We haven't built anything to allow our customers to actually place an order in our store. So let's finish up by building an orders facility. Before that, let's create some property classes that we can use for it. Open the IDEO property classes form. Hit the filter in place icon to exit filter in place mode. Then hit new from the toolbar. Let's name this first class customer ID. Let's give it a data type of string, a length of 50, a label string ID of SID, and for the domain IDEO, let's provide the customer table. For a domain property, select ID, and additional list properties, select name. Let's add another class and let's name this one item. Let's use a base class on this one so we can inherit attributes. Select our item base property class. For the domain IDO, select items. For the domain property, select item. And for additional list properties, select description. Let's add one more class. Hit new from the toolbar and name this one order num base. Give it a data type of long integer and in the default value field, type in all caps, auto number, open parentheses, close parentheses. Auto number is a WinStudio substitution keyword, which it resolves by querying the next order number from the table, as well as any other data in the collection that hasn't yet been saved to the database. Set the column data type to int, and give it a label string ID of S order number, and set justify to write. Save and close your form. Make sure to unload the global form objects from form definition. Switch back to the Design Mode tab and make sure you unload the global form objects there as well. 
Next, let's use the new data maintenance wizard to create our new orders facility. Select the new form definition icon from the toolbar and select new data for the category and maintenance for the wizard. Name our IDO orders and let's use our hello world project. Give it a table alias of ORDS. Let's add properties below, the first one being order number. Let's use our order num base property class for this property. This will automatically inherit the data attributes that we need. Go ahead and check the primary key and required fields. Hit the add row button to add another property. Let's name this one customer ID and let's use our customer ID property class. Since this property class is missing a SQL data type, set it to end varchar and then check the required field. Add another row and let's name this one item. Let's use our item property class. Let's override the length here and set it to 50 instead. Let's also set this field to be required. Let's add one more row and let's name this one count. Set the data type to long integer. Give it a label string ID of S count and let's set the default value to one. Hit next and then finish to create your table and IDO. Select yes to create our orders form. This will launch the new form wizard. Let's accept the defaults and hit next. Let's leave the selected properties as is and hit next. Use the buttons on the right to rearrange the properties on your form. I'm gonna set it to order number, customer ID, item, and then count. I also noticed that my caption is not defined for my item. Go ahead and set the caption for item as S item. Hit next and then finish to create your form. Let's switch back to the runtime mode tab and let's open our form there. Our form will automatically open in add mode. Notice that our order number is defaulting to one. This is because it's using the auto number keyword which will automatically increment the value by one. Notice that the ID and item fields both have their associated list source attached to them. This is because we use the domain IDO information in the property classes that we created. Go ahead and add a couple records onto your orders table. Notice that the order number increments by one each time. When you're finished, hit save. Well, that wraps up part four. In part five, we will build onto our orders facility by adding more property class extensions to support drill downs. We will also start building in validations, creating derived properties, and we'll even add in some form script to our form. For more tutorials and documentation, check out the Mongoose portal at mongoose.info.com. Thanks for watching.